Yeah, I feel great. I feel inferior to the amount of followers I have compared to these guys. These are all pretty big. Uh, but the whole the whole idea is from a thousand to a million, right? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm kidding. So you, you got to start somewhere to get there. They all were at the same place you were. Uh, so I guess let me uh, kick off this panel. My name is Timothy Tello. I'm the COO of Pocketful of Quarters. I've been in the video game industry now for about ten years. Um, worked on indie development studios, from business development studios, licensing work, uh, games like the like Narcos, um, created my own games. Um, now I'm one of the co-founders of Pocketful of Quarters, an online esports platform and the first ever legal cryptocurrency in the world. Uh, we are very heavily creator and influencer focused. Um, and I've spent the last six years working with influencers and creating um, some of the first ever influencer gaming apps in the world. Um, so welcome to 1,000 to a million uh, followers. Let me introduce you to these guys. Uh, up in my left corner, you'll see Abdallah. Uh, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell the guys what games you're playing, how many followers you have, and where, where you're, what platforms you're on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Abdallah. I do daily Nintendo content. I'm one of, one of the Nintendo brand ambassadors. So whenever Nintendo gets a brand new game co that comes out, I'm usually one of the first people to promote it uh, via live streams, via tips and tricks tutorials, everything like that. Uh, you'll find me playing pretty much every Nintendo game that comes out. Uh, looking forward to replaying through the Pikmin series. I went through and replayed through all of the Paper Mario series. Um, other than that, I enjoy Mario Kart Tour and uh, Animal Crossing. So, yeah, as far as uh, follower numbers, uh, we've got about 800,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, channel reaches, uh, you know, a couple million every month as far as unique users. But, of course, you can't get everyone to click on that subscribe button. So, Click the subscribe good. button. That's what he's telling right. you. Do it. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Uh, all right. So, Stevie D on my right, uh, you know, Stevie D. Tell the guys a little bit about you, what your, where, your, where your platforms are, what you do. Okay, yeah. So, obviously, I'm Stevie D. Um, I stream on Twitch. Um, I started a few years ago, and I kind of got into Twitch when it was um, Fortnite was growing, and it was oversaturated. And, obviously, a lot of people know that started at that time. It was very, very difficult to stand out. Um, and I was, yeah, I was sitting on quite low viewers like well you know compared to what i am now um for a long time and i was just sort of a, like a level i didn't seem to grow much and what i found is um i needed to find something that stood out and, and uh, play to my strengths so um what i was good at is good at organizing things and and coming up with smart ideas so i started hosting tournaments and hosting tournaments in a, in a way that gave me an edge um and that's what i started doing beginning of this year um, and I basically, I developed like, uh, like a bit of a code in that allowed me to produce like a graphical leaderboard. And I think that's what really brought, um, some interactivity into my, into my streams. Cause people were really like, you know, they like to see their name on that big screen and like cool graphics, like they're in like a top level Fortnite tournament. Um, and that's, and then from there I started growing. Um, one of the tricks I was using was I was like, using all the other platforms like Instagram, Twitter, and really trying to bring in new audiences from all different platforms. So I'd highly recommend using all them. Um, so at the beginning of the year, I think I was on like two and a half thousand followers, something like that. Um, and then I just had a, I, I don't know whether the, the pandemic maybe did boost like the amount of viewers I had or what, I don't know, but like, um, yeah, from like March, April, I just, I grew quite a lot and now I'm on like uh, nearly 13,000. Um, I've managed to go to 20,000 in the mayhem, which is what's used for the uh, competitive side of tournaments. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's where I'm at, at the minute. And nice. um, yeah, I still play Fortnite. <laughs> nice. Uh, so down on my bottom left, we have Atomic. Uh, Atomic, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself, what you do, where you stream. All right, so I'm Atomic. I actually stream on, on Twitch, and I have 45,000 followers on there. And I'm also on YouTube as well at 89,000 uh, subscribers. And the main thing that I'm doing with my channel is I'm playing Fortnite on the Nintendo Switch and sort of just looking to continue to branch into other Nintendo Switch games as time goes on. Uh, Rogue Company just entered the beta, so I'm looking to play that on the Switch as well. It's just a unique audience, and I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are on the Nintendo Switch, and it's an underrated platform. So that's what I'm doing. 
Nice. All right, Jesse Cox, bottom right. Uh, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself, how many followers you have, where, the, where can I find you? Uh, hey, everybody. Um, excited to be here. Uh, wow, I uh, have been doing all this stuff for 10 years now. Um, cool. I have, I know. You're I an have, OG. I, yeah, yeah, back in the day. Uh, YouTube channel, uh, 971,000 subscribers. Uh, Twitch, 200 something thousand followers. Um, I've just been doing it a long time. It's one of those things where, you know, <laughs> you do it long enough, numbers add up eventually. So it really, <laughs> I'm not out here like, I'm very good at this. I've just been doing it a very long time. And um, yeah, uh, uh, I now have moved into making games. I am the executive producer on Monster Prom, uh, and uh, I'm making a few other games coming out, oh, coming down the pipeline. That's dope, man. That's cool. Yeah. So, oh, <laughs> ten years. That's that's like original content creators. Ten way years. Back when, before you could make money doing it. Yeah. Before well, way they before gave you money. Yeah. Uh, I, have a, I have a couple of friends that are back from like the old YouTube days back way back uh, where they're like invited to the white house. Cause they're, it was still, it was like the new cool thing. And yeah, you know, they're a top 50 guy invited to the white house. And I, I, I talked to a few of them, but you know, they basically just grinded and grinded. There was no That's money. It's in about. It. Yeah. It's just about doing it nonstop and just like, you don't quit. That's how it works. Yeah. Are you, are you quite excited to be in so close to that 1 million mark? Is that like a milestone you've been looking uh, forward to? Is it? Or? I mean, it was, see, I, I made a terrible, I made a terrible mistake years ago. So I entered one of those, um, like kind of a contest thing where it was like, all right, if you subscribe and then you do this and this, you'll enter to win this. It was like me and a bunch of other channels. Uh, mm -hmm. Terrible choice on my part. At the time, I got like 200,000 subscribers instantly overnight. All ever fake. since then, this was three years, four years ago. Ever since then, it I've slowly just broken even every month in subscribers because all those people who subscribe for the uh -huh. contest are unsubscribing. And then yeah. I've been stuck yeah. at 970 some thousand subscribers for, I think, three years. So when it, you're sucks. Talking, it sucks. What, so what you're talking about is one of those buy-in uh, giveaways that you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I it's, would highly advise anyone that is looking to be a content creator, stay as far away as possible. Don't do that. Cheating is Terrible not the like way. Choice. If if you yeah. cheat it, you will you're gonna break the algorithm. It's gonna it's going to hurt you, and you're gonna grow slower. It's not a good thing. It was it was for like a switch contest. <laughs> I was like, yeah, all right, this seems like <laughs> fun. I'll I'll do it. And uh, yeah, terrible choice. Don't there is no like get rich quick scheme when it comes <laughs> to numbers on the internet. Don't yeah. do it. It's a trap. Yeah. So I guess one of my big questions I would have for you guys is if we could go around the table, the first thing that pops in your mind is if you could give yourself advice when you first started, what would be the first thing that you guys would tell yourself? So let's start with you, Abdallah. Well, what was the, what, if you could tell yourself anything going back to when you started, what would you say? I would say investing in the proper equipment. That's the biggest thing for me. I remember, um, I still keep all my old YouTube videos on there. So if you ever go to my channel, you can see like from 2012. Um, it's just like, I would have like a little point and shoot camera, you know, pointing at like a Nintendo 3DS and it was a bad quality. Uh, and my microphone was garbage and my camera was garbage, but now, you know, it's been a lot better. So I would tell myself that invest into quality uh, you know, graphics cards, quality mics, all that stuff in order to get started. It's it's a really steep thing to say to someone just starting out with it, right? Because like you yeah. don't have all these extra funds aside to pick up a $700 camera or like a $200 microphone, right? You don't yeah. have those things, but like the difference is like night and day. And if you really want to start gaining attraction and followers, um, having that very nice, high quality product is uh, really number one. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. I think quality is far superior than uh, content these days. It used to be content was king. Put put out as much as you can, but now the quality, like people want to see like 4K videos. It's crazy sure. how, how, how much this stuff is getting in depth. Uh, CBD, one thing you could say to yourself when you started. Um, I'd probably... I'd probably say 
try not to follow the trends too much and try and focus on more what would make you stand out and play to my strengths more. Identify your strengths as early as possible and then try and, you know, try and, uh, what's the word? Like, use... Be, be you, I guess. Play to your yeah. strengths, be you. Be original. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. What do you think, Atomic? What would you say uh, to yourself? For me, I think the biggest thing would be to, like, don't be afraid to switch things up and like don't hold on to things too long. Uh, back when I first started, I was playing a game called Clash Royale. It did really well in the beginning, um, but they made they they were doing really slow with their updates as the game went on, and I sort of held on to that for a little bit too long. And I could have made the jump and the switch to Fortnite a lot earlier, which would have been like huge. So just make sure like if something's not working out, start looking into other things and start slowly expanding until you find the next wave. Nice, well, Jesse. What about you? What would you say? Uh, I'm going to do like the old man version of this and say uh, it's a job, not your life is what I would say to my younger self. And that uh, I think a lot of time we get caught up in the fact that like you can do it at home. You can just walk from a bedroom or in the same bedroom to your computer desk and just mm. do a thing. And it seems like it's 24 hours a day whenever you want. But, you know, sometimes it's fine to just walk away for a few days and be like, I'm good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break. Uh, because you can burn out real easy and not realize that you burn out until it's too late. Yeah, I've seen a few people, especially streamers, have had like some crazy like breakdowns, like anxiety yeah. breakdowns. There's a lot of tension in the air when you're trying to keep up with what you're, you think your followers want you to do and mm. uh, what you need to do as a person and a human being in life. It, it, it definitely, it, it, there's a fine line there that you need to separate yourself from. Well, there's, there's the pressure that you feel about how the whole idea of streaming is like, if I do it every day and I do it enough that I will grow. And you feel like, you know, the whole subscriber thing is like, uh, I need to do this content for you or else mm -hmm. you're not going to come back next month. Right. And so you feel obligated and you keep doing it and doing it and doing it and it wears you down. And sometimes you just have to be like, yo, I need to focus on me for a minute. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, with you being close to a billion, you know, you started 10 years ago at the dawn of YouTube. Did you really think you'd be where you are today? When you started out, did you think that was even possible? Or no. was it just something fun no. for you to do? Uh, it was just something fun to do. At the time, we were um, doing old World of Warcraft videos, trying to get them on a web page, uh, trying to all outdo each other and get them on a web page. And then, you know, we all moved on from that. But at the time, it was just trying to get recognition and like outdo other people. It, was, yeah. it wasn't even about making money. And then out of the blue, someone was like, dude, you can make money doing this. And we were like, all right. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's what happened. That weird. It's strange that it happened that way. Well, what about you, Dog? Did you think you'd be closing in close to a million? Uh, let's see. I always wanted to. I, I honestly always wanted to. Uh, it started off as a hobby for me, honestly. Um, I was working retail full times, you know, 50 hour work weeks. And uh, I just, on my, on my days off, I recorded like little Nintendo videos here and there. Um, I saw that people were doing it way back like seven years ago and they had careers going. And I said that, you know, I loved, you know, making videos. I loved teaching people how to do things and I love playing video games. So I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to go into this. So, uh, yeah, I did that on and off for a good, like, six years. And then I just finally jumped the gun and did it full time. And I'm just really, I'm just, keep, I keep on going with it, you know? Because, like, getting yeah. to a million is really, I was, I was really hoping that with, uh, you know, with quarantine times, you know, the silver lining of quarantine outside from the world, you know, completely shutting down is the fact that our careers here have inadvertently been boosted since a lot of people are at home you know, watching YouTube. So there is a little silver lining to the current um, political state of the entire world right now. So I was really hoping that just hunker down, grind it out, and uh, hopefully hit a million by the end of 2020, so. That was awesome, man. So you, yeah. it was always the goal. There was never, never anything in front of that. It was, I'm, I'm getting to a million. Correct, correct. That was always the goal. And like, I, I know my wife was a big doubter at the beginning. She's like, you're, why are you even like wasting your time playing video games in the basement, <laughs> making YouTube videos? And I'm like, look, I'm going to pay the bills with this one day. You watch. And then, you know, when it just came to a point where, you know, the monetary gains was 
right around the same money that I would make working for someone else in retail 50 hours a week. I mean, it was a no brainer to just jump in and go all in with that. Yeah. Um, and then I've never looked back since. So that, that reminded me of my mom always telling me, you're never going to make any money playing video games. Right. Oh man. Mm -hmm. You can look at me now, mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I think a million, a million, you know, Atomic, you're around, hovering around a hundred, you know, CBD, you're growing pretty rapidly. Where do you guys see yourself in five years? Do you see yourself doing what you're doing now? Or do you think you're, you know, is there an evolution to what you guys are as creators? Um, for me personally, I think that I've got like a lot of evolving to do like a hundred percent. Um, I do see Fortnite being like as a, as a great game and on um, being on Nintendo Switch, but like with all the talk of like new consoles coming out and potentially a new Nintendo Switch coming out, I definitely could see myself evolving my content. And I would say for like a five year goal, I'm honestly shooting for like a million million subs on YouTube across um, or in, in five years. And as far as Twitch goes, I, I would say the number that I've always wanted to hit on Twitch would be like a thousand, like be able to get on stream at any point in time and like hit a thousand viewers. So there's a lot of grinding behind it. I'm also working like on a second channel. I know the mobile gaming industry is growing rapidly as well. So I'm working on mobile games and we'll see where that channel goes too. But uh, definitely just got to keep putting in the work every day and putting out a plan and it should, it should work out okay. Anyone else, what do you guys think? Where do you, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Um, I, I don't know, to be honest. I think similar uh, to what um, Foresight was saying. Um, like I feel like I've got to adapt to changes um, as as the industry changes I've got to try and change with it and learn yeah. so like in my opinion you know I think growing a channel um, and I think Jesse you're, you're a very good example from what you said how your channel grew collaboration is the biggest thing and I don't see that much with the uh, streamers as, as much as I do with YouTubers you, you think there's a reason why people don't collaborate more on stream? Uh, I've heard a lot of streamers say, um, like both parties would be kind of nervous about the whole thing. They, they feel afraid to reach out to another streamer because they feel like the other streamer will think that they're just trying to leech off their viewers or, you know, try to gain something from them. So a lot of the times like people will be friends, but they don't want to reach out and play with each other. Um, I think honestly, Another big thing is you have to read your chat a lot, especially like when you're a smaller to mid-sized streamer and playing with other people means that you're focusing on talking, hanging out with them and you're not paying as much attention to the chat. So then the people who used to watch your stream when you were smaller, they're like, okay, so this guy is ignoring me now. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave. So then also stunts your growth. So it's kind of tough sometimes. Okay. So yeah, it's not traditional. Um, yeah. yeah. Allow me to chime in on that one. Like collaborations are a little harder because, um, you know, every, everyone's kind of out for themselves, regardless mm -hmm. of if they'll admit it or not. Sure. Um, so exactly like, uh, we mentioned earlier, the whole leeching thing, like that, that's a big thing too. So I've done my fair share of collabs, but like, I, I set forth some expectations of saying, Hey, you know what? This is going to be like a win-win. Like I want to promote your channel in every way possible links in the description, talk about it at the beginning, talk about it at the end, call to actions, info mm -hmm. cards, social media posts that show all of your socials. And I expect that in return, you know, having some sure. sort of, you know, agreement at the beginning, like, hey, this is what I want you to do by the end of this, almost like a business transaction. Mm -hmm. Like, I, as I, I think yeah, it's 100% a hundred percent of business transaction. Yeah, as curt as that sounds, but like, at the end of the day, that's what it is. Because if sure. you don't do that at the beginning, then you're not going to get the exact same thing that you put effort towards your collaboration. At least that's what happened in my experiences yeah. with so it, I mean, it sounds like you're saying this needs to be symbiotic, right? You get what you get. Absolutely. You, yeah. But like, you know, I look at like TikTok, I look at Instagram, I look at uh, going way back to Vine, you know, all those people have grown so rapidly and becoming the biggest creators, like make no mistake. Those guys are in the 19, 20, 30 million. You know, you look at people like Lele Pons, you look at people like, you know, but you know the reason they're so big is because they had like a group of friends that were constantly collaborating together yeah. and sharing sharing uh their their followers so now they're they're basically multiplying their growth because they're constantly you know getting what what they were growing on the side of them with their friends they were also growing and they were sharing that and so it just it grew so rapidly and jesse when you were talking about how you and your friends are just trying to one-up each other kind of sounded very similar to like how how those guys grew so quickly, you had kind of a similar connection without even trying to do so. 
Yeah. Um, I think, at least for my growth, I'm very, you know, I'm very happy to admit that most of my growth has been through collaborative efforts in the past and working with people who've been bigger than me on, on and had bigger channels. And I, yeah, I think that uh, the majority of people as they grow, uh, I think doing it by yourself is a rarity. I think mm. uh, if you can grow by yourself and it's your like own efforts, that's amazing. But most people that I know uh, blow up because they're working with someone else, even on, in, on Twitch, right? They're like streamer houses and they're a different thing. I think that a, a lot of that works together or stream teams. Yeah, um, Face Clan's a good example. They grew yeah. so quickly because they collaborated all the time. Yeah, and I, I, I think that every time I meet someone where they're just like, yeah, no, I just did it myself. I'm like, wow, that's really impressive because yeah. that, that's you know, it means that you have like, <laughs> I don't know, there's something special about you that you like. I don't even need nobody. I'm I can do my own thing, yeah. but I wouldn't. I, most people, I'd be like, don't try to do that. <laughs> don't, that's yeah. that's not the way to go. Like work with other people, create communities, uh, have things where people want to see the two of you play together. There is the downside that if you play alone, they're going to be like, why aren't you playing with your friends? <laughs> and then, you know, I don't know. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah, I think you're, um, you're right. Like, because I feel, I feel like I've kind of um, restricted my growth a bit because I haven't been doing any of that. But then when I do like read and research, I do, I do sort of read that collab is the, one of the best ways of growing because you, like you say, you're, multiplying you know because everyone you're both sharing each other's communities mm -hmm. um whereas when you're doing your own you're just relying on um you know the growing yourself on your social platforms etc so yeah that's definitely something i need to talk to myself and, and really think about um using collabs a lot more yeah you know i had a, i had some kids come up to me and ask me like how do you grow you know your social media channel like how do you get a big instagram and I was like, look, if I were you guys, I would get like 10 of my closest friends, be doing crazy stuff, like not, don't burn anything down, but like, you know, go and have fun, enjoy life, be, be original. But each one of you guys post and each one of you guys tag each other constantly. And what's going to happen is like, maybe one of you grows five and one of you grows seven and one of you grows eight every single day. You know, the power of compounding, it's just like, you know, like banking, right? The power of compounding is you're going to keep sharing each other and their five is now your three and their seven is now your four and you're going to grow 10 and they're going to grow six. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen much, much quicker. Um, and so, you know, in my opinion, collaborations, and I, you know, I, I speak to my, my esports team all the time, collab, 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 please collab join together, do a tournament, do something like, you know, the more you guys collab, the faster you're going to grow. I, I do think um, Abdullah had a point with the whole, um, you know, the business side of it, because um, I, I'm, I'm sure many of you as well, like it, if you, like you trust, if you, I trust quite easily because I like to pride myself in being someone that can be trusted so I've trusted many people in the past and got burnt <laughs> and then it puts you off collabing with people because you're just like, I don't want to get burnt again. No, so I get you, it. you kind of, yeah, I think he had a good point. You do really want to outline the sort of expectations of each other and agree that you agree with them <clears throat> expectations. So you, I, neither of you get burnt. Sure. And I also think, you know, when you get to like Jesse and Abdallah's level, right, there are more milkers and there are people looking to genuinely work with you and collaborate with you and it's symbiotic more people like you know he oh shoot he has eight hundred thousand followers how do i get myself attached to that and that you know i think that's what he's he's talking about yeah. i think he he you know i bet you know his inbox is full of people saying hey would you shout me out hey will you do this <laughs> even i get that so yeah i believe that <laughs> it's uh i'll yeah i'll speak to that because i mean that's kind of how i am like i've done maybe i've collaborated in my tenure here with maybe four people entirely um and some of them were really good ones and some of them i got burnt just like you did and it, it sucks because like now once i've built up my personal brand that's recognized by nintendo as an actual brand and like you have to be careful of who you're picking and choosing to collaborate with and Nintendo's right? not easy the, the yeah. hardest company to get with i promise you 
Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like I'm picking and choosing. It's like, like, is it even worth it to risk my brand that I've built up for seven years for a simple collab that this person is potentially offering? And then I don't know what they're going to do in the future, uh, whether it be throw some political remarks, religious remarks, et cetera, et cetera, on their social channels. And then it comes back to bite me because I was the one that decided to collaborate with them. Yeah. I'm not shooting down collaborations altogether. I'm just saying you have to be very particular about which collaborations you choose and make mm -hmm. sure it aligns up with your brand that you want to be out there. And like I said earlier, you know, like I do it with, um, with, a heavy, with a heavy load on my shoulder because I've been burnt in previous collabs where I would do everything for the other person, but not get the exact same thing back. So mm -hmm. it, uh, it's, a, it's a tough one. It's a tough well, one. So I think it's also, you know, we should point out money you know this is your business this is right this is what you do for a living it's jesse so you do you know atomic i'm sure you're getting close to being able to do this full time stevie you know you're trying to get there i think there's a big difference in when you hit that you know you're in the hundreds of thousands of followers millions of followers this is a company it's moving forward as a business and you have to be very careful where you align yourself now I think what I'm really kind of getting at is people that are trying to get that, that. I think that first thousand is the hardest thousand you will ever get when you're growing an account. And I think collaborating with your friends and growing that way is the fastest way to get to that first thousand. And then maybe, maybe even 10,000. But once you kind of hit that 10,000 roll and you start snowballing, things start moving a little quicker, a little quicker, a little quicker. And so I think, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from and, collaborating at your level like you know you're way up there how do we get people to use i guess what i'm trying to what my opinion on collaborating is is you know yeah it, it's a tough one honestly it's it's about content it's the content you make how are you going to essentially stand out out of all the millions of fortnite streamers out of how are you going to stand out right that's really what it boils down to cool you can partner up with someone with a whole bunch of big followings but if you're just watching this panel right now like, okay, where are you going to find that person? Like, okay, maybe you don't have six or seven friends that you can just go around here collaborating with, right? Like, mm -hmm. how are you going to do that? It's yeah. hard. It's easier said than done. Mm. So it's, you have to find something that no one else is doing. And that's the challenge that's up to you, right? Yeah. I'm not going to spell it out, but just be yourself. That's the only thing that I can kind of say to that. Mm. Yeah. So um, I guess that leads into one of these questions, you know, how do you balance yourself com with what you want for your channel and your content? And how do you guys, you know, and what your, what, what your followers want you guys to do? You know, if you're trying to create content, that's, you know, one X and they're wanting Y, you know, Stevie, do you say run tournaments? What if they're wanting to do something completely different than that is play with you on live stream or whatever, you know, um, how do you guys, react to your community and, and, and guide them to really follow what you want? Is it, you know, can you guys talk a little bit about that? Um, for me personally, I say it's got to be like a pretty decent split. Because at the end of the day, like without the viewers, you're, you're not going to be where you are. Um, so usually what I do is, you know, like I said, I play Fortnite. One of the things that viewers like to do is to play with the streamer, whether it's in like Zone Wars or in Customs. So I'll, I'll like lay out a schedule. I'll be like, all right, so for Saturdays and Sundays, we'll have Customs where I play with you guys. And like at the beginning of streams, we'll start on the stream for an hour. We'll do Zone Wars where I play with you guys. And then after we do that, everyone's happy. Everybody knows that's going to go down. And then when I move into like whatever content that I want to do, whether it's like playing scrims or playing arena, then they'll be okay with it. And then they'll be happy like throughout the entire thing. So I think you just have to sort of balance it. You can't completely ignore them, but at the same time, you can't like always do what they want. Otherwise you're going to lose your mind, like trying to do the thing. Kind of hit it on the head there. <laughs> yeah, not much we can add to that. He's got that spot on. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, it's more along the lines of like, but at the same time, you, you can't just allow them to dictate what you want to do as a streamer. And I think Stevie was talking about earlier, like you can't just follow the trends, right? Like you got to find a way of doing what you want. And at the end of the day, what your ultimate goal is, is you want your viewers to come here for you and not just the game you're playing, right? So that's it. It's, I want to say it's, a, it's an 80-20 split, right? At the beginning, like people will say, oh, here's Fortnite. Great. Like, I like the game. I like seeing these people get these kills and these victory royales or whatever. But like, you want to convert those 80% people to the 20% that are here for your personality. 
And then once you've effectively done that by doing something different, you know, sharing anecdotal stories, you know, just opening up to your chat or just everyone on board, then you can pretty much take those 20% and then just like stray off a little bit and start doing things that you want to do. And you're not going to get the most results, of course, because that's what variety content is. Like if you do variety content, you shoot yourself in the foot. Because, you know, if you came on board as Mr. Fortnite streamer or Mr. Clash Royale, and then out of nowhere, you're playing Fortnite, like that, I'm, I'm going to unsubscribe. Like where's Clash Royale? So it's, it's getting those 20% that are there for you to follow you through whatever new ventures you were on board with. Yeah, like 100%. I actually like, that was that was my story because I initially played Fortnite on the, or I was playing Clash Royale and then I hard switched because the game died and I started playing Fortnite on the Xbox. Right. And I grinded that for like a year and it took me like a year to gain. I think it was like 1,500 subscribers. So then I stepped back and then that's where I decided to make a brand new channel and then play Fortnite on the Switch because nobody was doing it. And that's where my unique blow up started and then it really helped me out through like overall the last year, so. Sure, it's like sure. yeah 100 the, the whole thing's kind of like a, a catch-22 in a, in a weird way that uh because everything's run by algorithms now the mm. the idea of being different and trying new things and playing new games and doing stuff it, it's one of those like if you were to stream the most popular game right now if you aren't one of the top streamers you're not in the no one's gonna scroll down far enough to see you but if you decide I'm going to go stream some other game that no one's playing, well, no one's going to go look for that game. So no one is seeing you play that game. And so it's, it's very difficult to break in. And the only thing that I can suggest to anyone who's like, what do I do? How do I grow? Is uh, we, we've said it here, I think, just to find you know, what you are good at and what sort of relates to your audience, things that... But there's, I, I think there's the, I, there's a shamelessness to it, but I think uh, the hustle is a, an important part of all this as well. Like getting your name out there, like constantly. Uh, I'm definitely not going to say that, that way back when, 10 years ago, when I started, I would post on forums and then get my friends to bump up that post. <laughs> and then I would then create new screen names and bump up that post. I'm not <laughs> saying that's what I did. <laughs> But if I did that, that is real. yeah, like, you know, if you are playing a game, go to the Reddit uh, section for that game. If you are like, do whatever you need to do. Like, this is a thing that's happening. You have to get your name out there because no one's going to do it for you. Yeah. And no one's going to just find you randomly. And if they do, that is a fluke. And so, <laughs> it's you know, it's, it's, it's a... It, advertising is a huge part of this and i think a lot of people don't remember or think about that like getting your name out there is is big mm. well like you say about advertising um you know one of my secrets i was used i was actually investing some of my funds in advertising on instagram because i was doing tournaments um and that i i got quite a lot of success from that if i market it right if i got the post right and i got this it's about the the content of the post and then the timing of the post. Um, and when I blew up the most was um, when Fortnite were teasing the new, well, the return of the game mode trios. And it become this massively anticipated game mode that everyone got really excited about. So there was, there was this big hype surrounding the whole trios uh, coming back into the game. And I could recognize that hype. So as soon as they released it on that very day, I started doing a tournament, um, a one K tournament, and it just everyone came flying in, and like it was crazy, like that, like I'd never, like it, it was quite good because it gave me a taste of the, the viewers I could could get. It was like it was overinflated because I nearly reached, um, I think it was like a thousand live viewers. I was like so close to it, but like I don't get anywhere near that now, but. I just basically saw an opportunity and I jumped on it and I got a big growth spurt from that. But that's, that's the key though, is recognizing those opportunities and those moments. And it even comes down to planning, right? I have a, a schedule here on my computer over here. That's literally just like the games that are coming out next week. And can I get a thing out on the day this thing drops and that'll be overinflated 
right? The views mm. will be overinflated because algorithmically all, you know, I'll be in with all of those videos that are played that day, but people are looking for those videos. So there's a higher chance they're going to find your content. Um, and then it falls off drastically. So there is a little bit of that game to it of like, I need to get something out on the day of. That's also one of the most stressful things in the world. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I hate about this line of work, but it's, it's how it works. It's what we do. Have any, have any of you guys did, done the Facebook hack or know what the Facebook hack is? Mm -mm. So one of the things that is happening now, uh, what you could do is you can go join groups of uh, Facebook people, you know, content that you want to be similar to. So like find a Fortnite Facebook group, whatever, join the group. And what happens is you can immediately create a new group. And once you're joined to a group, with, could have thousands of members, you can individually click on each person and invite them to your new group. And you can direct market to them and you can move them around and people are doing this to grow Instagrams, like hundred thousand follow Instagrams, like, like literally within a month. It's crazy. But is that, is that like people that stick around and interact I, I, with you or I, is it just I have numbers? no idea. I'm, I've literally seen people just pump and like pump them full and just drop them. Like it's crazy. I, that's how you end up like me then. Well, <laughs> then you're so, like, so oh, what they're cool. I'll never grow anymore. Well, I think you have to still like, you know, continuously, like you got to find like-minded groups, right? Like Fortnite or, you know, whatever you're playing and try to get them to move over. Then you have to keep them involved. But, you know, what they're doing is you can invite them one by one and, you know, people are going to join them. Then you can put ads, you can post, you know, your stream times, whatever into it. And it's like direct marketing to the people that you guys are, are, are looking to reach out to basically. And as long as you keep them fed, you know, you can grow that channel doing that. I just wanted to see if you guys had heard about it. I know people that are doing it, but uh, yeah, maybe one of y'all will try and let me know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Sure. <laughs> Stevie D, you try and then you let me know. <laughs> uh, okay, so to date, you know, you guys have all been streaming, you've all been doing your YouTube stuff. What is your most memorable moment to date? Let's go around the horn, I guess. Abdallah, you want to go first? Oh yeah. Um, I guess last year was pretty good. Uh, being, you know, working my YouTube channel, you know, as content family friendly, you know, positive uh, Nintendo gaming stuff. Um, I was observed at a uh, PAX arena. Uh, of course, at another one of the PAXs back when we used to go to conventions uh, for stream <laughs> start. Uh, for stream stars where I won a tournament and uh, just how I conduct myself during one of the tournaments um, You know, we won it. It was just a lot of energy and stuff like that um, Outside of everything that I've done for Nintendo uh, one of their tournament directors uh, recruited me on board to be on part of the, um, the The Mario Maker 2 Invitational at E3 last year That's Which dope. was really it was crazy. There was only four people uh, that were invited out of the entire world to go up on stage and play the new Super Mario Maker game blind uh, and then end up like competing in this tournament. So it was honestly like one of the biggest epitomes of anything that's happened, right? Like, did here you win we go. That tournament? I did end up winning it. Spoilers yeah. in case you didn't see it. It was amazing. The competition was so good. Um, everyone crazy. that competed were like really, really high esteemed people in the Mario Maker community and Nintendo community. Um, but it was great. It was it was validation. It was everything that I kind of worked on uh, throughout my tenure with Nintendo, and it was just outstanding. It was That's a big awesome. deal. Yeah, yeah. Are you so? Are you basically like the best Nintendo arcade guy on the planet? Is that what you're telling me? Nintendo arcade guy? I don't know. Well, so like basically <laughs> like, like all old school Nintendo games. Is that like is that like are you the best? I, at I'm I'm pretty good at a lot of games, but like I'm not a master of any. Right? Like you give a you give me a controller of like any of the classic N64 games, like I'll play them. Right? Like Ooh. there's a little bit of aptitude involved. Right? And everyone on this panel has a little bit of aptitude in whatever field they're kind of in, be it Fortnite, Clash. Um, anything like so i feel like there's a little bit of aptitude involved for sure cvd up to date what is your most memorable moment uh tough question i mean yeah i don't i don't want to sound like it's all about numbers because it's not 
But I, do, I think like the one I touched on earlier about when I just had this massive growth spurt and I had 900 viewers in my stream, that was obviously a very memorable thing because like I know realistically my channel is not at that level. So to get a taste of being at that level, if you know what I mean, was, was I don't know, it's just quite memorable, I guess. It's like getting the peak into heaven a little bit, kind of seeing. Yeah, what I guess so. Yeah, like. I, I don't know. I guess so. Yeah, and just like so many people <laughs> walking and stuff. I mean, it was a bit ridiculous because I couldn't read a comment. Like I'm a slow reader anyway, and the chat was like that, ah, and I'm just like, uh, <laughs> I couldn't do anything. But yeah, I think I think I guess that's what stands out because that's the first sort of big moment I can remember. So that's cool. What about you, Atomic? <laughs> Uh, for me, easily, uh, back in 2018, when I was when I had first started off on Clash Royale and I was picking up a lot of traction, towards the end of the year when they had the World Championship, they actually invited me out and they flew us all to London. Um, and I got to like hang out with all the biggest Clash Royale YouTubers like Chief Pat, Molt, and Nick and Knight. They were all there and we were able to like watch from like the YouTuber stand, watch all the professional Clash Royale players go at it. And, you know, it was just one of those things where it was like, you know, I'm, I'm finally starting to do something um with this whole youtube thing and it sort of just like showed me what was possible so since then it was just one of my biggest memories 100 percent in this industry that's dope yeah that's really cool jesse what, what's your most memorable moment uh man i'm blessed to have many great memorable moments uh i've been doing this a long time but uh, traveling back in time um i one of the very first things I ever played on YouTube was Witcher 2 way back in the day. And um, I became very good friends with the people who at CD Projekt and they like flew me out to Poland and we did like a whole thing. And all these years later, I'm still very good friends with them. I am a uh, troll in Witcher 3. You can murder me. It's great. And more importantly, uh, in Cyberpunk, I'm literally in the game. Not like a character, me. <laughs> I have a quest and you can find me and it's the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> and I played a, a version of the game. I played my quest and it was the wildest thing I've ever done. And I laughed so hard. So like I, feeling I mean, real good about that. That one's super up there to have that to be in good. your own game. Like that's, that's dope. I that's can't. Awesome. Yeah. I'm so excited that uh, look, you can definitely fail it. So if you play cyberpunk, <laughs> keep me alive please that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> that's awesome Man. yeah I don't, I, i'm not in any games yet I, i'd love to be in one i'd probably be someone that you'd like have to like hit with a bat or something like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay well let, you know wrapping this up you know i want to talk about one last thing you know we talked about what was the first thing you would say to yourself what is it that you want to say um, each of you guys grab like 30 seconds to talk to the people watching. What is it that you want to say to them about how to grow their career, their career, how to start, you know, whatever you want to tell them. Abdullah, let's start with you. Um, what do you want to say to them? Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's, it's very hard and intimidating at first, for sure. Like getting, like you said earlier, the 1,000 subscribers, even hitting that mark is so hard. There's going to be times where you're going to stream to a dead audience or a dead chat. No one's there, right? There's going to be times like that. But you just got to keep on going with the grind, investing good um, in good equipment. Make sure that you know what you're trying to do that sets you apart from everyone else. And then ultimately, it's just stay true to yourself on what you really enjoy. Um, it doesn't hurt to follow a couple trends here and there because that's how people get their breakaway hits. Um, so a lot of you guys can attest to that. Like, hey, if you start um, you're doing something on day one, like we talked about earlier, that'll definitely project yourself a little bit farther versus trying to compete with things that are already happening. So do a little bit of research on that, find out what you're passionate about and just hit the grind. That's really what it is. That basically summed up this whole call. Pretty much. <laughs> that was right on it. CVD, what do you want to tell the people? Um, yeah, I'd say always believe in yourself because um, only you understand your ideas and direction. Um, and what you find is not everyone's going to understand that. So you're going to have people around you that are going to doubt you. Um, so always believe in your your own goals and, and what you can achieve and, and try not to let people take that away from you. That, that's right on to Tom, what do you think? 
Uh, for me, I guess the biggest thing would be to remain consistent. Um, a lot of times in this industry, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a long time. You're not always going to blow up. I know it happens here and there, but for the most part, you have to be really consistent in what you do um, and just play the long game. You can't expect it to come easy at all. Um, and just, just to make a plan, make a plan, make sure you know what you're doing every single day. You can't just go around shooting aimlessly. If you have goals and you have plans and you, you try your best to hit those, then it'll make it a lot easier for you long term. All right, Jesse, what do you want to say to him? Don't judge your success based on others' success. Um, that's, good that's, that's the biggest key I can give you after mm. doing this for so long is I've seen people fly by me in numbers, and it's like, I'm, I've been able to do this for 10 years. That's success. So, you know, everything is, is relative, and don't judge uh, based on how other people are doing. Just focus on yourself and, and – and keep chugging along. Well, I think if I were to say one thing, you know, one of the biggest issues I see people have is they just don't know when to get started. You, you just got to go. If you're waiting for the right time, you're never going to find that time. You, you, if you want to be a creator, be a creator. Today's the day you start. Um, you know, manifest what you want. Believe in what you're trying to achieve. And, you know, anything's possible. Just keep grinding. All right, guys. You know, I, I appreciate each and every one of you guys being on here. Thank you. You know, um, I hope to see you guys all soon. Good night. <laughs> Take it easy. Good night. Yeah, thanks. Good night. Yeah, it's good to meet you all as well. Yeah, wonderful to meet you too. Absolutely. Pleasure is mine. Okay. Right. Are, Are, we guys. Are we good? We're good. I'm, I'm turning it off right now. One, all two, right. three. <laughs>